so you wanna be the king of games. But your matches all end the same. I've got just what you need. Feel free to SMD. Joseph Rothschild here, a.k.a. NBT, back with another episode of SMD, the quick and dirty way for filthy, filthy net deckers to no-skill their way up the Master Duel ladder. Today, we're taking a look at Budget Pacifist. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Looking for a place that anyone can upload Master Duel decks and get feedback from the community? Want to give opening Master Packs a try without spending real money? Want to know the gem cost of a deck before you commit to it? Then check out www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's take a peek at Pacifist. Pacifist the Phantasm City is the cornerstone of Phantasm Spiral, an archetype that's been near and dear to my own heart since its release. It's gained newfound popularity because of the Xyz event, where it was the lucky recipient of the title of Best Control Deck That Doesn't Use Xyz Monsters and Also Doesn't Have Cards on the Special Ban List. This oddity has birthed a new generation of Phantasm Spiral pilots, excited for their Xyz event success to bleed into Constructed. There's one more interesting bit about Phantasm Spiral that's specific to Master Duel. The core is really cheap. This makes it a very attractive point of entry for new players, and it helps that the upgrades to the deck, things like Ash Blossom, Maxi, and Skill Drain, are all good generic staples. If you're looking for a good place to start your Master Duel journey, this is an exceptionally cheap and very powerful option. As for the deck itself, it revolves around this card, Pacifist the Phantasm City. Pacifist is one of the most powerful and most misunderstood cards of all time. When I was playing this in paper, I'd carry around a few printed out posts from the Judge community on Facebook just to show people that yes, it does work like that. This card summons a token whenever an opponent activates an effect and adds a Phantasm Spiral spell or trap from deck to hand whenever a normal monster is summoned. The spells all facilitate the big old dragon, but the traps are removal and negation, a lot better. As a result, this deck is a competent and capable control deck, provided it can find exactly the field spell. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Now first off, I'm trying to keep this as cheap as possible, and that means no super rares and no ultra rares. As a result, a couple of our choices are not because the cards are generally better, but because they are a higher rarity in Master Duel. First up is Mech Knight Avram. This N card is a 2000 attack normal monster, and you pretty much always need one in rotation to get your pacifist off to the races if your opponent refuses to commit. A lot of people play Megalo Smasher X in this role because of its synergy with C Stealth Attack, but Mech Knight Avram does a couple of things a little bit better. Firstly, it plays around There Can Be Only One, and secondly, you get to use World Legacy's memory. You usually need about five copies of a normal monster, and you can supplement those normal monsters with search spells, but the search spells for Megalo Smasher X are supers or ultras, and the search spell for Avram is a rare. Memory also can be activated at the end of your opponent's turn, netting you a search on their turn. Then you can add the Avram back to hand, normal it again, and search twice. Oftentimes, it's a plus two over the course of a turn and a half, and that is really fantastic. Next up, we've got three copies of Planet Pathfinder. Not a fantastic normal summon, but a way to get to Pacifist the Phantasm City. We're going to have to play it because we don't have access to things like Pot of Desires or Pot of Prosperity. Next, we're playing three copies of Forbidden Chalice. This is effect negation at rare and powerful in the TCG, so... Do with that what you will. We've already talked about two World Legacies Memory, but we're also playing three Torrential Tribute, three Compulsory Evacuation Device, just good to have non-destruction removal, three Paleozoic Oleonades, three Paleozoic Dynamicious. I think Dynamicious is a criminally underrated card in Constructed, and it helps here that if you have a Paleo Engrave already, you can trigger the effect of the Paleo Engrave, summon it, and that triggers Pacifist the Phantasm City. After that, we've got three Lost Wind, just a general multi-use negation trap, three copies of Phantasm Spiral Battle, and one copy of Phantasm Spiral power. I've found that four is kind of the magic number in terms of search targets. You might want to vary which ones you use, maybe two battle and two power. I tend to like battle a little more than power, even though negation is really strong. This deck has a really hard time just getting over monsters without sea stealth attack, and battle often performs double duty on monsters with ignitions. After that, we've got two copies of Dogmatica Punishment. Really good card, even without Entis. Two copies of Fists of the Unrivaled Tenyi. It's like a really, really bad solemn judgment, and three copies of Sea Stealth Attack. 
In the extra, we've got Fossil Machine Skull Wagon. This is, of course, a card you can bin off of Dogmatica Punishment. Unfortunately, it's probably your best target. It's only got 1,700 attack, but can trade for a Spell Trap. For our Fists target, we're playing one copy of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. I imagine you won't get to resolve that effect of Fists twice. We've got one Dragon Master Knight, just the highest attack point monster for Punishment we have access to. Barbaroid is part of an old package for Maximus with Cyber Dragon Nova. Used to be played around Cosmo Era because of a card that did something similar. Cyber Dragon Ovix, if sent to the graveyard, allows you to summon a machine monster from your extra deck, and it turns out that this is the best one we have access to. We've got Cat Shark and Mannequin Cat. These are okay to make if you summon a couple of Paleozoics. Diamond Crab King gets over some odds and ends, as does Malevolent Sin. The latter can be upgraded into a Digital Bug Corbage. Imduck the World Chalice Dragon can be made with an Avram. Pensatag can be made with an Imduck and a Planet Pathfinder to get over something like a Crooked Cook. Technically, you could summon Defender of the Labyrinth, but I really can't think of a scenario in which it would be good to. You can do the aforementioned Link Climb to get to Geonator Transversor, which you have a lot of control over because you control where your token is summoned. And finally, Bellcat Fighter is technically summonable, though I don't think it's going to come up. Obviously, the extra deck doesn't matter too much. As long as you've got targets for Dogmatica Punishment and Fists of the Unrivaled Tenyi, you're going to be fine. With that, let's jump into the games. Our match is up against Invoked Dogmatica Shadow. Now, it takes a truly twisted mind to look at a format like Master Duels and think, huh, you know what I should play in a world where Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer doesn't exist? IDS! Then again, I played it for the first week of Master Duels, so maybe I shouldn't be throwing stones. We've opened a hand that's just about as good as it gets. It's Pacifist the Phantasm City and four trap cards. We'll pass back to our opponent and wish them the best. They begin with a copy of Magical Meltdown. They seem to always have it. I thought this card was semi-limited. Thankfully for us, we can cause it to resolve without effect by activating Paleozoic Olenoids, targeting it, but because an effect was activated, we're still able to activate in a new chain, Pacifist the Phantasm City. Now, importantly, Pacifist the Phantasm City will activate on a new chain every time. It's a field spell. It doesn't have the capacity to make a chain as Chain Link 2. As a result, if you do not control a token at the resolution of the chain, you will still summon a monster even if you controlled a token when that chain began. It's kind of hard to explain, but you might see it in action. Here we get the Phantasm Spiral Power, thinking if they have an Alistair, it'll be good to prevent them from getting the invocation, and guess what? That's exactly what happened. They're going to go from Alistair into a copy of Artemis the Magistus Moon Maiden, and I'm thinking, oh god, I sure hope they don't have anything else. Uh, thankfully, Dogmatica Fleur de Lis the Knighted is not anything else. They'll go to the battle phase, and oh no. They'll activate the effect of Dogmatica Fleur de Lis the Knighted. We'll chain the effect of Sea Stealth Attack. Now, Sea Stealth Attack activates an Umi from your hand or graveyard, and while an Umi is on the field, it gains a couple of effects. It allows you to banish a water monster you control to prevent face-up spell traps from being destroyed by card effects, and it turns your level 8 or higher water monsters into construct. We're going to go ahead and activate the effect of World Legacy's memory here. That summons a Mech Knight Avram to our side of the field, and then we'll go to the battle phase and attack into the Artemis. Now, unfortunately, SSA is mandatory, which means that we aren't going to be able to do everything we want. Uh, ideally, we would get in for some damage here as well. Our opponent's going to normal summon another Alistair, and we do not have negation for that, so we are going to have to contend with a copy of Makaba. They'll go for Magical Meltdown afterwards, and I think it's probably worth battling this just because it's a good card. Being able to respond to fusion summons is pretty important. There are some scenarios in which our opponent could maybe chain block something that removes a couple of pretty critical cards from our side of the field in a scenario where we have sea stealth attack on field already. We'll chain a paleo to that activation, which triggers the effect of pacifist phantasm city and allows us to get a battle to hand. They're going to go for a copy of invocation here. They're going to banish the Alistair that's already in the graveyard to make a copy of Makaba. I already have removal for the Makaba as long as they don't have a trap card in their opener. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. We'll activate sea stealth attack here, banishing the Oleonades. I just kind of want to see what's going to happen. Uh, unfortunately, the Oleonades is just forever stranded in the banished zone in this scenario. They are going to get that Alistair back into their hand, and they don't still have an out to the SSA, so they will Link Summon a copy of Predaplant Verte Anaconda. Uh, I don't know what exactly they're planning on doing with this card, probably something involving Neos Fusion, but I don't want to find out. Uh, they'll pass back to us, and unfortunately, this is a huge weakness of this deck. It is not very possible to push for lethal 
in the same turn. Uh, we're going to have to take a couple of them in order to uh, get this person down to zero. We'll get in for 4,000 here and then pass it back to our opponent after setting a couple of cards. They'll draw for turn, and now you're going to see the second oddity of Pacifist the Phantasm City. They'll normal summon Alistair the Invoker. They'll go ahead and get an invocation. At this point, we can't stop the invocation train from rolling, but we should always have removal for the Makaba, and the Makaba is never going to be able to negate the effect of the sea stealth attack anyway. At best, it's just going to be able to trade with the Avram. They're going for the Aegides here. They'll trigger the effect of the Aegides. They'll use Aegides in order to destroy the Avram, which is weird to me because it's the only monster they could have conceivably walked over, but I don't understand what my opponent's inner machinations are about. Anyway, they'll go for Nadir Servant afterwards, and that's a really strong card. They'll go Apcolone into a copy of Dogmatica Fleur de Lis, the Knighted. From here, they're going to trigger the effect of the Apcolone in Graveyard, and I'm expecting the Schism, so when I see the Squamata, I am a little confused. They go for the Squamata effect here because they sent it off of its own effect before going for Reshidal Wendy. Wendy will summon to the field a copy of Shidal Beast, and then afterwards, because there is a monster that was special from the extra deck on the field, they will go for Dogmatica Fleur de Lis, the Knighted. I fire the Torrential Tribute here, uh, and then I chain the effect of Sea Stealth Attack, banishing my token. Now, the token's not going to return to the field, uh, but I just want to ensure that our stuff isn't going to be destroyed. Everything my opponent controls is sent to the graveyard, and thankfully they do activate the beast, which means that we can trigger Pacifist on a new chain, getting a token. Now, Pacifist's effect is mandatory. Uh, that means that the lock effect will trigger even if you don't have a target in deck. Here, my opponent Ash Blossoms, even though I have searched every Phantasm Spiral battle that remains in the deck. Uh, I don't know why you're allowed to do that, but, you know, the rules are the rules. Uh, at end of turn, we're going to activate memory in order to get an Avram, then we'll normal summon the Avram, and our opponent will concede. So, we're back with the deck, and, ah, oh, god. I love this archetype so much. I could play this until the heat death of the universe. If you're looking for a stepping stone to more competitive Master Duel play, this is a great consideration. It's super cheap, and the upgrades to the deck, as mentioned earlier, things like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, Max C, and Skill Drain, are pretty universally good. You will be well served by crafting them. It's fun, it's interesting, it's a control deck, so it forces you to understand what your opponent is doing, and most importantly, you feel like a brain genius every single time you outplay an opponent who doesn't understand how the new chain activation of Pacifist works. See you in game. Oh, I mean, see you playing this in other games. I don't want you playing this against me.